What up guys, it's Jay here and welcome back to TV Time with Jay and this time I am here to bring you a review for personally one of my favorite new animated series of the year honestly my favorite new animated series of the year by far quite easily if we're not actually including like anime and stuff The Owl House Season 1 that's right folks uh, you're seeing this pretty late if you are watching this as it drops. I am actually recording this at like damn near 4 a.m. Because the finale, technically the broadcast time is like 8.45 Eastern Standard Time p.m. on Saturdays. But um, it dropped on Hulu TV at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and... I'm a content creator with insomnia, so I was awake and I was ready to watch this. Um, the lucky DirecTV people got to watch this at midnight, but uh, I do not have DirecTV. I have Hulu TV, which is still pretty great. Uh, anyway, regardless, I get to talk to you about a show I have absolutely loved every single second of. Uh, but since this is a season review, I am going to treat it as I would like a Netflix review or a Hulu series review things like that I'm going to be covering you know my thoughts and feelings on different events all throughout the season so if you have not seen all 19 episodes of the Owl House season 1 consider this your spoiler warning because I will be going into spoilery details as well as spoilery spe speculations now obviously I cannot talk about every single episode of the Owl House in one video or this would be crazy long. I'm going to condense it. Uh, I did do individual Owl House reviews. Unfortunately, it was not on YouTube. You know, this was still during the time where my original channel was shut down. And I was still trying to figure out a way to get back. But in the meantime, I had uploaded reviews on another platform called Vlare.tv. Unfortunately, that site is defunct now. Hence why I'm back on YouTube. Uh, so, you know, I can't really just link you to those reviews. Uh, but, um, needless to say, I reviewed every episode. Well, almost every episode. I skipped a couple uh, just because of uh, scheduling stuff. But, you know, I watched every episode and I absolutely loved it. So, what is The Owl House? The Owl House is the brainchild of Dana Torrance, one of the... Uh, main writers on Gravity Falls. He was part of the Gravity Falls writing team. Uh, so, you know, you can tell right off bat just from art and writing, dialogue, humor, that this show has a very much Gravity Falls vibe to it. But that does not mean that this is just a Gravity Falls clone, right? Uh, it has the same aesthetic, um, vibe, and, you know, humor style, but like, it's not just trying to copy Gravity Falls. It is definitely its own thing. Um, it's very much more focused on high fantasy type stuff. It definitely also has a little bit of a magical girl element to it as well. And, you know, there are massive, massive Harry Potter-like elements and influences all throughout the show and I'm pretty sure you can see it pretty clearly behind me and if you can't I apologize my camera might be out of focus but right behind me on that bookshelf it's a it's the Harry Potter series up front and center I have been a massive Harry Potter fan since the age of seven um, I grew up with those books I love them to death I do not agree with the author whatsoever on some of her views matter of fact the majority of her views but I love that series to death and you can tell that you know if it wasn't you know just Dana you know who you know threw these in here uh, obviously she has like a whole writing team and staff with her as well but you can tell that a lot of the Harry Potter references in here aren't just casual ones these are references made by people that love the series and just have their own grievances and like 
love to make fun of it because I mean that's the thing about Potter fans right you know we love the series but we also love to make fun of some of the stupid things about it um, and you can see that all throughout the Owl House so you know the basic premise of the Owl House is our main character Lusa Seda uh, she is a human girl who is super weird and just doesn't fit into you know conventional society you know she gets into trouble a lot just because people just don't understand her and she's just super out there and so to try and get her to be more normal I guess um, her mom tries to send her to this like math summer camp or whatever but instead uh, she ends up go um, going to the woods to like retrieve one of her favorite books Azora the Good Witch, um, which it's taken by this weird owl creature, and she ends up being led into the owl house, and the door to the owl house, you know, is actually like a magic portal that spirits her away to this new world known as the Boiling Isles with a bunch of, you know, fantasy creatures, and basically it's like, you know, high fantasy Australia and I say high fantasy Australia because everything in this place will try to kill you the animals the plant life everything and uh, basically uh, she ends up striking a friendship with the owner of the owl house Ida the owl lady the most powerful witch on the boiling isles and you know in exchange for some of her human stuff uh, which, you know, she uses as part of, like, her scams because she likes to, like, hawk trash from the human world and kind of sell it as, like, these, you know, mystical, mysterious artifacts of an unknown world. So she very much has a uh, similar vibe to, like, a Grunkle Stan from Gravity Falls, you know, that, you know, scam artist, you know, wild character type thing. And a lot of people even speculated that, you know, Stan and Ida may have dated at a point because we have seen pictures of both Ida and King featured in Gravity Falls. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, thank you, Alex, for, you know, helping your friend out. And uh, it's just a nice little connection. Also, Alex himself is featured as the voice of King, the King of Demons, the most adorable little guy ever. But you don't mess with him because he will rule over you and trample your soul. Do not mess with King. Although he does accept all cuddles. Um, King is great. He's absolutely, like I said, just adorable. Fantastic. I love his friendship with Luz. His friendship with Ida. Um, just, he has probably kind of the most character development. I thought he was just going to be the annoying, adorable mascot. But there's... A lot more to him than meets the eye it's really cool um, also of course you know I said there are a lot of Harry Potter influences uh, you know there is a straight-up magical school that is you know definitely a riff on Hogwarts and you know this show itself it its main theme that it tackles is conformity and loose definitely rebels against that same with Ida and it's that kindred spirit that, you know, is why Ida connected with Luce so much to the point where she actually accepted Luce um, as her apprentice and she's teaching her magic. And clearly, as a human, she has more powerful magic. Um, and even the, uh, the Azora book series is a big part of, you know, the Boiling Isles as well. A character that we meet later on, Amity Blight who is so totally not Luce's love interest in this show, and uh, she's definitely not crushing on her at all. Like, they're definitely just, you know, frenemies who eventually became friends. Yeah, they're definitely not crushing on each other. Uh, it's adorable. Absolutely love it. I ship it. I ship it so hard. Uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta, you know, brush past that, otherwise I'm gonna talk about it for another 15 minutes. Um, all of... Luce's school friends are pretty fantastic. Like I said, Amity is just great. All her gay panic is adorable. Um, Willow is amazing. She's a really good friend. And I really like Gus, his human obsession. I thought that was going to be a little annoying. 
but it turned out to be really endearing, and he uh, grew on me a lot as a character. I thought, much like King, that Gus was going to be the annoying friend out of, you know, Luce's friend group, but I, I like each and every one of them, uh, you know, for their different strengths as characters, and I loved seeing kind of the relationships between the three existing, you know, school characters, especially, like, the hidden relationship between Amity and Willow as well. All of that was pretty fantastic. So, eventually, we get to a point after a while where we find out more about Ida, because we see that something's up with Ida. We see at a point where she turns into this big owl monster, but she uses this potion to turn herself back. We find out pretty early on that she's been cursed, and that's the reason for her transformation. We then we eventually get introduced to the big bad, Emperor Bellos, the person who kind of introduced conformity on the Boiling Isles itself, and uh, he's the one who rules over everyone. And people like Ida, who, you know, don't follow the system and practice all types of magic, they're known as wild witches, and basically Bellos wants to stamp them out because, you know, they are a force against what he stands for. And... Ida's sister Lilith actually works for the Emperor. She's part of his coven. She is the coven leader, and she is the one tasked with bringing Ida in. And then we find out more about their family drama, their personal dynamic, and then we discover that Lilith is the one that cursed Ida. And then in the finale, we just see more, even more depth to that. Of course, Lilith cursed her sister because she was insecure she was afraid that she just couldn't measure up that she couldn't beat Ida, and so she wanted to just take away her powers for a day but it backfired on her um and you know it turns out that Ida wasn't going to fight her at all she was going to back down and let her win because she knew that that was lilith's dream and she wasn't going to get in her way i absolutely love that that just shows what kind of a character Ida is and, you know, I don't like Lilith, but I do appreciate that she, at the end of the day, realized the error of her ways and stood up for her sister and was there for her. You know, she took on the pain. You know, they share the curse now, so it stopped the curse from spreading to just Ida. And now you see that streak of gray in Lilith's hair. Both their eyes are two-toned now. So, you know... Both Lilith and Ida's magic are severely weakened, but, you know, they are okay. It seems like, at least. Um, and so now, basically, they're going to have to learn magic from scratch. So maybe that even means that Lilith and uh, Ida are going to have to go back to Hexide. I think that would be really interesting. Kind of like a, you know, magical Happy Gilmore type situation. That would be hilarious I I would love to see that shit it would be pretty great to watch uh, just a bunch of comedy gold um, also uh, we see that like you know again Luce came prepared you know Bellos' main goal uh, in capturing Ida was apparently to get the door to the human world so you know Obviously, my main thought is Bellos wanted to invade the human world and take it over and subjugate these, uh, you know, weak humans who, you know, don't use magic. And he was going to take the ones with the affinity to use magic, just like Luce, and use them as, like, some kind of uh, slave labor or servants or, you know, just drones and soldiers. Uh, we did see when Luce stepped out of the portal back into the human world that she couldn't use her magic anymore. So it looks like... Her magic is directly tied to the Isles, the Boiling Isles. And uh, we did hear, right, in King's story in the beginning of the finale, that the Titan themselves is what taught people to use magic in the first place. And, you know, during Ida's lessons, she talked about how, you know, communing with the Isles is the secret to wild magic. So, Luce does have a direct connection to the Isle somehow. I don't know what it is, but uh, that's definitely the source of her magic and why she's so powerful. And also, you know, I had this uh, conversation with a friend of mine, and we were thinking, like, you know, you look at the skull that is the Boiling Isles, the skull of the Titan, and it looks 
very similar to like a bigger version of King. So what if King is named King because not only is he the king of demons, but he's like a baby titan. So that means King could be super important in the future. He's not just the adorable sidekick and the name King really does have significance and it's not just part of his fear me even though I'm absolutely adorable gag. So very much looking forward to that. This show is amazing. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here. I could go on and on. I'm glad Brian and I are going to be doing a podcast episode next week about it. Uh, but uh, if you have seen The Owl House, definitely tell me your thoughts and feels about it. I know I have plenty, so I will have a lot to discuss in these comments. So uh, fire away. Uh, also, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, in the outro card, I will leave linked uh, my most recent upload, my Lucifer review. If you missed out on that one and you want to check that out, I'll leave that link there. And I will leave linked a video YouTube mysterious algorithm things you might like. But that's it for this review. Uh, it was a bit of a long one, but I had a lot to say. Hope you enjoyed it anyways. But until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next review. Peace.